goodness, with face, Pat, and Tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to the pod. What's up, man? three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz, along with. It's the other third of the partners, the Padawan hit along with. And since everybody say I don't show my face, this is the face of face, and I'm in the place. <laughs> Indeed, man, we all can. No majority pause. Uh, <laughs> Pat up there looking like he in the middle of a frat party right now. Um, but, uh, <laughs> 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 ink bongs and shit. Um, but yeah, um, happy everything to everybody. Um, it's a rough week on your boy, but and I was going to come on here and talk about loss today. But I decided instead I'm going to just talk about some other shit, keep it light, and make myself happy and laugh and use my brain, but not to be all sad right now because I'd have had enough of that. So um, how y'all doing? I don't know if I asked that already, but I'll ask it again anyway. Uh, I'm copacetic. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. Copacetic is good. I am chilling like a major villain. Well, don't be a Like one of them villains in the old 50s cartoon with one of them curly cute mustaches. You're a good person. Don't, don't. So he big, he was a big dastardly. <laughs> yeah. Tying up girls on the train. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we yeah. see him pop yeah. back on the screen with a curled up mustache and a, a round bomb with, with a little shoes <laughs> in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. You'll <laughs> never beat me this time. Ha! You won't Ooh. fool me this time. <laughs> Call the copper. I want to know who was the guy they based that that design from, because it has to be some right. guy. It's some <laughs> funny ass dude that was a criminal, but he was funny as hell. And they were like, "Oh, we're got to tell somebody about this. This got to be a story." And somebody was like, "I can draw. I can do the voice." You know who he looked like? You know who he looked like? He looked like the French dude that tried to design the first parachute that jumped off the Eiffel Tower and killed himself. He had a curly key mustache just like that and wore all black and shit like that. He looked like him. Oh. Google. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> I forgot his name, but he's French. Well, so we about to Google this. Bookmark that. Um, make sure you run that back later. We're going to try to flip yeah. that up. Shit. Fuck it. The oh. last <laughs> picture. Well, damn. Well. Yeah, a lot of you I bet his knowledge. parachute didn't work. No, nah, it yeah. didn't. I it bet didn't. he ended up slamming like Wiley Coyote. Yeah, it was made out of like regular cloth and shit like that. It wasn't made out of like real parachute material. It was like it was back in the day when they were trying to figure out what to make in the model. <laughs> <That's sad. clears throat> yeah, you, you out here with that mustache, then got a dacker. You out here jumping out with burlap sacks. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> bird. with a with a um, bed cover. Canvas sheets <laughs> with a bed cover and some rope, calling it a parachute. Yeah, I mean, his idea, the 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 idea of his parachute was a good idea, but the it coming to fruition won't won't good. Application. Yeah, it should have stayed the idea. It should have stayed. Some things need to stay ideas because they great as ideas, and that's it. Speaking of great ideas, um, Nick Cannon had his seventh baby. With a new baby mama. Um, mm. And it got me to thinking about like family dynamics and family structures in 2021, um, as opposed to family structures that were more socially accepted in, in old times. Um, so I have some questions that I want to just pose to the group, kind of build on. And uh, the first one is Is it possible to be a great parent with so many kids not living with you full time? Like, I can see if you got, like, you know, maybe the majority of them, but you got one or two here. But, like, he got seven. They all in different houses. Like, how are you ever giving um, all of them what they need? 
No, speaking as a parent who has one child who's not living with him, um, it's a struggle on the emotional level for me, and I know it probably is for her. Um, as far as doing a parenting thing, I'm there as much as I can be, or I can I say allowed to be because of distance. So some things I have no input on, or like some day to day things, but major issues I, I I do have a lot of input on. Um, health wise, I'm always monitoring health still. That's that's like a daily thing because my daughter is diabetic, so we're always monitoring that. But as far as I would say, the level of parenting that I'm able to do with my children that I li that live in the home with me, it is different and it can be seen even from my outside perspective looking in. So as the actual father who has to deal with this situation, you feel me like it ain't a negative situation, but I know co-parenting versus parenting, parenting. It's a big difference. Now, my lifestyle has changed, of course, due to my parenting, my parenting issues, not even issues, but the way I have to parent being distant and being here. So, of course, there's a difference on how I discipline and whatever, whatever, you feel me? Um, and you can tell that when my daughter does come down and she does live with me for the time that she does live with me, it's some it's, it has to be an adjustment there. Um, but as far as someone who has more kids and all of them live somewhere else, it's all about... And that is it has to be that by that person's lifestyle and that person's income because you would still have to be able to spend that time because it's not all money that matters. That's what I'm time, that's what I was time matters. You feel like um I try to do everything I can, everything my daughter wants, but like every parent knows you're not gonna be able to meet all those wants, but you can meet all the needs. Um I think I'm there, but of course every parent who is a distant parent wants to be there more. Um I'm always at a drop of a dime if need be. So it's never been a time my daughter's called me and I can't get to her if, if she needs me there. I've always been that. But as far as me just being at different performances and stuff like that, I feel like I could, I wanted to be there more. But if there any circumstances, it is what it is in the past. But as she gets older, we form a different bond, even from even from a distance. You feel me? So she tries to involve me more. She calls me on her home more. We video time, we FaceTime, but that's still not the same to me and in person time so as a person who grew up with one parent and longing to know another parent i feel like she still may grow up with some of the same feelings i had because a parent is not there but on the other instance she won't because i i am here you feel me like i am here to a certain distance but i still long to want to be there more i can't really speak on her side i can only speak on mine and what i think she feels um, but in the Nick Cannon situation, I don't know me personally how that would work because you have a multitude of children in different parts of the country. Um, now, depending on his relationship with his his the other other parent, his co parent, that may be a feasible situation. I don't know if he all of them, all the baby mamas got a relationship and they all agree, okay, we all he gonna get the key all the kids this time or whatever, whatever. Or what? But if you got seven kids, it's only seven days in a week. You can't, unless you're flying every day, you feel me? Where are you? How you going to do it? Now, you got a certain amount to live with you, and you're just going to see the other t other ones on the weekend, something like that. Okay, I can understand that. But with a multitude of kids, like, if your pockets ain't like that, it ain't going to work. You feel me? It's like, somebody's going to grow up feeling neglected, feeling not wanted. Somebody's going to grow up with some type of daddy issue just being on okay my brother my sister see you all the time why well, i can't see the same amount of time they can't you feel me right. even though none of well, none of us live with you why can't we all so it's always gonna be something like that you feel me? so i mean it's difficult all around but it's always gonna be hard on the kids and that that's the main thing and i don't think a lot of people focus on that that right there maybe difficult for the parent to move around whatever but it was the parent's decision to lay down not right. the kids so just look at how the kids be affected. Uh, me personally, like, these days, if you can't afford to have a multitude of kids, you need to start wrapping it up. Just wrap it up anyway, same sex. But if you plan on having kids, if you know your finances ain't right, don't have a multitude of kids because at the end of the day, your struggles will just become the kids' struggles. That's all. Yeah.
Yeah, hell yeah, they will. Um, I was actually about to ask that. Um, but what did you have on that pet before I asked my next question? Um, I mean, I feel like both of y'all hit it right on the die. I can't really say too much because I don't have it. But at, at the same time, it's kind of obvious that if they're like in different separate places, that's going to put a hindrance on. Like, I feel like being a great parent depends on the the end result of the child at the end of the day, like, or, or whatever, and how that child feels about the parent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, and just how often they've been around the child to influence how great they are as a person, the child, that is. So That's real. I, would, I would say it would be about that pretty much. Yeah. I, I don't let me say, let me say this oh, real quick. Let me say yeah. this real quick. <laughs> Two parents out there who have kids in different locations, it ain't about, once again, it ain't about the 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 material possessions you provide for them. It's about their time. Because at the end of the day, in a kid's mind, if you're spending more time with another child than them, they feel like it's something in them that's causing that. You got to realize it's all about time. Time spent. All time spent. Well, I ain't going to say all because don't be abusive in your time. All good time spent right. is good for the kid. You feel me? Like, Spend that time with them, man. Like, I understand you got to work and you got to go pay bills. Spending time with your kids means so much to them. You feel me? Like, so, so much. So, little things like that, man. Just little things like watch it and watch a movie. Spend time with your kids. You got to multitude of the kids. Get them together. The games. I don't know what Nick Cannon is doing. Yeah. You can go ahead, Ted. My bad. No, you good. You good. Go ahead. Spit on it. Because, I mean, you, you know, I only have one child, so. There's our dynamics that I'm not even familiar with. So I go ahead and preach your wisdom. Um sure. I was gonna also ask, like, so like when you got a dynamic like that where like so Nick got he got twins with Mariah, that's there. Then you got, I think this is a new set of twins he just had with this new lady. And then he got like another baby over here with this lady, and then another baby over here with I think maybe Christina Milian or somebody. I don't know who it was, some some model lady. And then he had another baby somewhere else, something like that. So he got baby, he, got, a out, he got at least four different <clears throat> baby mother's cribs. When you got a dog, like even if you financially paying the bills, right? And you go see your kids, does that dynamic affect how the kids will develop their ideas of love and relationships? Like will they end up having a bunch of different I mean, baby mothers if you have a boy. That's all that's all in the parents because um regardless of what a parent's relationship is, at the end of the day, if the kid is educated enough and not just saying their mentality as far as their book smarts, I'm saying their parents talking to them and actually let them know what well, this is what's going on. Because sometimes the parents try not to talk about kids about adult situations. But sometimes you got to. You got to involve your children, especially when it comes to the two parents and how they're how they're moving, if they're together, if they're not together. Kids want to know why why dad not here, why mommy not here. You got to let them know that. But, and especially if you want to move on and bring somebody else around. Um, now, if you got a, a bitter, either one of the, any one, any, either parent is bitter, of course the kids going to grow up looking at something a little different. You feel me? Because they're going to have a, a, a jaded view of how this this dynamic would be. But if both parents are mature enough in a situation, you feel me, to move forward amicably, I believe I said that right, but if not, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> I don't think a child will grow up like that. Um, my situation, per se, uh, right. I grew up with my mother. Uh, my mother and my father was not together. And then when he, when he did what he did, like I said before, he passed away doing whatever he did, um, but they were not together at that time. Uh, I grew up not wanting to get married, but not being a person who was not involved in relationships. And I didn't have a jaded view of relationships. I'm married. And a successful marriage, I would say to myself, and my mother, you feel me like that's not what her and my father had. So, I mean, your environment does have a part to play in how you view that dynamic. 
But once again, communication is the key in all things. So I feel like if parents are willing and strong enough to communicate with their children and move forward together in a in a good manner, then the, the kid won't have a negative view. But if negative is in the air and it's nothing but drama there, of course the kid's gonna grow up thinking, oh yeah, this is gonna be the same thing gonna happen with me. Or this gonna be this gonna be the situation that's gonna repeat. You feel me? Like that's how cycles. That's how I see cycles happen. You feel me? Like especially when it's negative and it's breeding negativity around it, it just goes in cycles. But if you put a little bit positive in there and have some good clear communication, it all works out. Real talk. Uh, Pat, did you have anything on that? Um, I'm the hey, I was trying to get my um my audio and stuff because it's breaking up over here. <laughs> okay, cool, man. Cool, man. Yeah. Uh, also, also, before we move on, before we move on, let me say this. Now, we all know people who have a multitude of children. You feel me in different locations, but the I, I've seen the good and seen the bad. I've seen the maturity and growth in some of these people that we do we do know with multitude of kids. You feel me? So, I can't say that growth uh, growth potential is there for people in those situations. But I just hope at the end of the day, once again, I repeat it, that they put the priority of the children out there and not whatever feeling they have for or against their ex-partners. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Don't use the kids like that. Um, with communication, you touched on that a few seconds ago. Said communication was important. If communication is like all good, completely healthy. Everybody's on the same page. Co-parenting is amazing as far as communication goes. And the money is there. Does the family structure matter anymore if the communication and the finances are all great? Or does a nuclear family of a mother, a father, and then the kids under them in the house together all at once, is that still the ideal way to raise a family? Um, now, once again, speaking only from personal experience, I feel like when the communication is there and both people are willing to move forward peacefully, you feel me? Both people are willing or able to mature in their own lives where I have a wife and a family here. So when my daughter is here, it is a nuclear family here. When she goes to her mother's house with her mother and her husband, it's a nuclear family there. So I feel like she has two two sets of families. You feel me? Like, but both of them are clear clear cut households in that classical sense. She just plays a role in two families versus just one now. Um, I feel like it's good for her because she has a certain level of balance and a certain level of freedom and a certain level of responsibility. You feel me? So I mean, she gets it from both ends. Where in a classical sense. You have that mother and father, you know, just this. And when you get on your own, then you experience other other stuff. Where in her in her case, she's always, she's constantly experiencing new stuff because it's different here than there, vice versa. You feel like rules right. here may not be rules there. So, in my daughter's case, she's the youngest at her mother's house, but she's the oldest at mine. So, in one case, you're the baby, but the other one, you're the oldest. So, in one case, right. you're a leader, in another one, you could be the baby. So, I mean... It's, it's different experience for her. So, I mean, it, to me and from what I see of her growth, it's building, it's helping her build a different set of skills and different mindset growing up and give her, and making her ready for different situations other people or other kids in her, in her shoes won't be. Right. And making her more responsible for me. So, I see there's something positive where some people, other people can say it may be negative or whatever their opinion may be, but at the end of the day, if you know face, you know I really don't give two two shits about anybody's opinion anyway, because it's just like assholes, everybody got one. Right. But at the end of the day, I realize that the best thing for my daughter is for me to move peacefully and just do what I do what the best thing for her is, you feel me? And right. the best thing for her is to set clear cut rules in my household and knowing that when she's here, her mother supports what rules are in my household. So she's not going to say nothing against what I'm saying and vice versa when she's with her mother. You feel me? So once again, communication, it all boils down to um, finances that, I mean, those, those come here and there for everybody. So I mean, it is what it is. I ain't no millionaire and I ain't wealthy. So 
I got bills like everybody else do. But at the end of the day, I just make sure her needs are always taken care of. Wants, we got to grow up and learn. You got to wish in one hand and shit them up. So right. that's a life lesson I teach my kids early. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Big but um, I just feel like if that dynamic is a positive dynamic, it can work. But it, it has to be two individuals that's willing to move forward. Um, in a lot of situations, you have one individual that's stuck in the mud. They don't want to move forward. And you may have a female who, I don't want no other woman around my kid. That's never going to be a positive situation because in one instance, you're telling this man you don't want him to move forward. Because right. if he's moving forward, he, another woman will eventually have to be around that child because he's either not going to be around the woman or not be around his child. Right. Don't don't make him have that choice. You're, you're making him have a bad choice. And same thing if a man said the same thing. I don't want to know what to do to run my, shit, run my son. Now, if the dude is a good dude and he's willing to be there for your son and that wife, why not? Because that's his more love for the child. And at the end of the day, we have to make sure his child is getting all the love they can. Just build a small village around them. If she's willing to move forward and he's willing to move forward, we've created a, a village around this child that we're yeah. making sure every need and want because what faults this man may have, the other man may not have. What right, I can teach right, him, right, right, right. he may not be able to, and vice versa. I may not be able to teach you to do this, but he can. More power to you. Thank you for teaching. You got to get it. We got to get out of this mindset where we're thinking nobody else can teach my kid nothing. If you showing love to my kid and my kid know, oh, shit, I know my, my daughter knows it's only, you only got one daddy. You only got one mother. So that's not a that's not a, a, a thing in my mind. You feel me? So that, that egotistical shit is, Ain't no other man will be around my daughter. She got one daddy. She know that, but it can't be another man in her life. Why not have another positive male role model in her life? Right. With my shortcomings, right. is he may not have those. Shit, we may have the same shortcomings. I don't know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, why not let her be experienced and let her see more positive, not just the positive I can I can exude to her. I mean, that's how I view it in my own personal circumstance. But speaking right. on other people's circumstances, um. I see negative and I see positive. I I see, I see some kids that have grown up just because I I used to be a teacher, so I've known kids from they were real young, and now they've grown. They got their own kids and on their own family dynamic from having their mother and father come up to school arguing with each other while they're trying to have a parent meeting to seeing a kid grow up, have kids do the same thing with they mate. So I see the cycle, but then I also see some people break the cycle. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. To each his own, their own situation, but I just hope everybody does the right thing. Whatever. Right. Um, I think in a situation where all of the households that the kids are in have nuclear situations where you have a, a female energy and a male energy that are leading the household, I love it. Um, but I do think there's a lot to be said about a child having a constant balance of male and female energies on a day-to-day -day basis that are guiding their principles and values as they're growing up. So that way they have that even kill. You don't want it to be skewed one way or the other and they have too much of one or the other energies because then they kind of, that's when they start being either too overly one thing or too overly another thing. And either way it ends up being ugly for them in social situations. So um, I like a situation like what Faye said, where, you know, he got like a mother and a father in this house and a mother and a father in this house. And the kid basically is always surrounded by a mother and a father, no matter where they go. I like that, that vibe where you always have that energy because it, it gives a sense of consistency. And like I said, it keeps the child balanced. Like there's never a spot where they're going, where it's all feminine energy or all masculine energy. It's always a yin and a yang. Um, but in general, um, I definitely think it only works if communication is absolutely healthy and if finances are great and both of them have to be there. Otherwise, I think that's where most of the issues come from with like, it's either we're not talking correctly so we don't understand each other so we're fussing all the time and the kids suffer or somebody's doing too much financially and they end up resenting the other person who's not doing as much and then it becomes a struggle over Resource, financial resources. So I definitely think uh, both things have to be present, communication and the finances.
Pat, you got anything? I would say communication is going to be key anyway because you. I would say if you're not if you're not talking or having a plan or planning out anything or whatever, and y'all not on the same page, then it's always going to be the overthinking in the background, making making problems. You know, where mm -hmm. it probably isn't a problem. Right. You know what I'm saying. Yep. So now I, I would say if anything, like you can have you can have, you know, nuclear family is always the ideal or whatever, but you, you can still have a nuclear family like vibe and set up if the communication is right. Mm. So. I think I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, and I think that the family structure is an underrated part of what people think of when they think about like how they're setting up their futures as far as raising kids like I think planning that thing out beforehand like if you think it's a chance that you're going to be one of them people that may be a bit more promiscuous maybe planning for like okay what would this look like if I have two three baby mothers here or two three baby fathers here and the kids are not all with me how do I set this up what is the ideal family so that way you kind of at least have those conversations ready to go going into relationships with people as opposed to having to come up with that shit on the spot once you find out, oh, baby, on the way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, speaking of it being an underrated part of what people think about when they're planning, um, this week's test take is, you know, uh, feel free to debate me in the comments. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm right. What y'all think? Um, but this week's test take is this. T-Pain is the most underrated musical artist out here that is alive. Um, and here are my criteria why. Tell me if I'm wrong and why I'm wrong. Vocally, he doesn't get much credit as a singer despite being very talented in that area without auto-tune. I'm talking about just his natural singing voice. He's actually one of the better singers out here these days. He almost never gets credit for the usage of autotune being mainstream, even though he is the one that perfected it. Before that, it sounded horrible, and after that, it has sounded horrible. But he is the one that made it, like, sound the... Ex he used it the way it was meant to be used. Um, yeah. He also doesn't get credit for the fact that he was ahead of the game on his advanced tech knowledge and savvy. He was one of the first people that was in music that had their own app. Um, if you remember the, the T-Pain vocalizer thing that you had on iPhone back in the day when iPhone first came out, it was one of the apps on there and on iTunes and you could make your voice sound like T-Pain's. Um, mm -hmm. He was also ahead of the game on like doing the uh, things where like you can have this person's, this celebrity's voice for your message or whatever. He was mm -hmm. one of the first people early adopting on that. Um, he also still makes bangers every week. Like he has some type of online YouTube show where he just comes up and makes beats on the spot. And these shits are like, <laughs> <laughs> like these are number one hits if somebody did anything on them. I don't care. You, you could just play the beats and just have somebody say, doo doo, doo doo, doo doo. And it's going to go. It's going to go. You feel me? Nobody that people rarely mention him as a producer or a songwriter, yet he has nothing but bangers. Like everything he touches is a hit. It's crazy. T Pain is the most underrated musical artist, and that's this week's TST. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, we got no to be had, though. But and if I'm wrong, is who is the uh, most underrated? I can't think of nobody else to top that. But it but might be. I... I'm just <laughs> no, joking. he did. I'm just joking. Like, no ice, gorilla black. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Debate me. In My there. topic this week comes into play. I want to discuss when personal values meet workplace values, or should I say, when your personal ethics and morals meet 
a crossroad with your workplace ethics and morals. So my first question on the topic I posed to the group and to the to the comments is do your personal morals matter when you at work and have to do a certain job? Example, firing or disciplinary actions. So to further go forth on this example so you understand, put it in a real world setting. So say you you are at a job and you're the the supervisor or the owner, whatever the case may be, but you you're the man in charge or the woman in charge, and there's a person who violates a policy, but you feel that it was accidental, but policy calls for either termination or firing. Do you follow your personal feeling, or do you just go forth with what you what you have to do? You feel me? Mm. Put in that situation, what do, what do you do? Do when you have that crossroads of that internal struggle with the job telling me do this, but I I truly feel this. I think that's where it comes down to like, what do you truly feel like? Um, I think now if it's just like, hey, we're friends, you did some fucked up shit, you supposed to get fired, and it's my job to fire you, then you probably gonna get fired. And I would expect the same. Like, if I'm doing some dumb shit, fire me. But if it's on some shit where, like, the business got me trying to do some morally fucked up shit to you, and I'm sitting here, Uh it's like, it's like you are my job, then fuck no. But it also depends on how well I know the person. I'll be honest. Like, now, if it's some fucked up shit, it's some fucked up shit, I ain't gonna do it. But when I say, like, how much I care, if it's like, I gotta fire you, or I gotta uh, demote you, or I gotta get somebody else the job that you wanted, or have a difficult conversation with you about something about work. How much that's going to? How much that's going to bother me and play a factor into how I feel about my decision is going to matter how much I actually know you. Because if I don't know you, I'm not going to give a damn. Okay. I would say it kind of it feels like it's more situational for me. Like because and it also depends on how much leeway and power you have in that position if you're firing the person. Because if you think it's a simple accident or whatever, then like if you think it's a simple um accident or whatever you know you can just chop that up it's been plenty of times when I first started a job that I had like done something wrong or whatever and I may I will say it may be one or one or two times where they informed me you know if you do this if you do this under anybody else you could get fired right then and there or whatever but because they knew that I wasn't trying to do anything in, intentional as far as a malice or whatever like that. You know, right. they just gave me the warning and and went about went about my business or whatever, and then just let the performance detail that I wasn't trying to do that in the first place. I just didn't know what was going on. Right. So, so you have those situations, and I think those primarily it just depends on the um, the situation itself. Now, if it's like if it's one of those situations where you don't really have any choice, the the higher ups say, hey, you got to go, you got to go, then you don't got no choice in the matter. You got to actually do it. You know, that's why I say it all depends on how much leeway and how much power you actually have in the situation. If you're the person firing the person or not, because when, when, it, when it comes to job, it's, it all depends on like the ethics code of that job or I mean, well, it all depends also on the in that on that occupation itself because different companies have different policies and stuff like that. Also, right. but it all depends on. I mean, you kind of have to be a lawyer in that situation. You kind of have to be a lawyer, your own lawyer, when you're employed to a company anyway. Like, just know the company policy and know what to go go by and know that 
if you mess up a couple of times, that might be it for you and balance how yourself do, out. How much do morals play into that, though? That's what I'm saying. That's what uh, Faith was asking. Like, how much do morals play into all of that? I, I like, we like know that's... you got to do what you got to do as far as from, like, the judgment, as far as mm. the actual action, but how do you feel about it? Like, how do morals come into play when it comes to business? It, it, I feel like, I would say, it all depends on how much power you have because it's it's like, if you, in any situation where you're firing a person, you you have a human being that is losing their way of supporting themselves or their family, pretty much. Every situation where you're firing someone, that, that comes about, pretty much. So it, it, I, I feel like it all depends on the situation. Like if uh, it's a, how about, I give you a situation because I feel mm-hmm. like this is a good situation that takes into account what you were saying as far as like how much power you have, right? Mm-hmm. Say us three, right? We the partners, podcast going well. We get like a million dollar deal for something. And we're doing doing it or whatever, but I start messing up. I start tripping. I'm late for stuff. I'm tearing up the deal. I literally wrecked the million dollar deal, and you know we still you still getting money, but I basically ruined that. And it's like the right thing to do should be to fire me by business standards, because at that point I we would y'all would have talked to me and all of that, and would have been conversations had and other actions taken before that but now it's just like hey we got to get tears the hell up out of here because he's ruining the whole company could you like what would you do like you like business wise you should get rid of me Mm -hmm. do you i would have in at that point is it would have to be like a man-to-man talk between you, you and me about the whole situation. So right. you'll know at, at that point. Because, like, to me, <laughs> if I'm thinking about the partners, I'm like, well, if you messed up, I, I feel like all we can do is really do, like, a, a PR campaign to get you back in the good graces of everybody. Because that's, like, you did, like you're a central part of of the company or whatever. But if it was like, no, I'm talking about at this point, right? Mm-hmm. The comic book division is taking off. Mm-hmm. The merchandise and clothing uh, line is skyrocketing. The actual video content creation and the podcast itself is booming. So, like all of the phases that we initially set out to have, right? Oh, I'm gonna have to edit that sound out. Well, all of the uh, <laughs> situations that we set out to have from the beginning, they pop, right? Mm-hmm. At, that po- at that point, though, I am literally wrecking the ship. And y'all have talked to me several times. And I've like, yeah, I ain't about to change. This is just what I'm going to be doing, right? And I'm tearing shit up. What do you do? Like, is that the point where you are face to have conversation? Like, all right, look, man, tears got to go. Like, it's nothing else we can do. We don't know what else to do. Y'all done tried everything. Y'all done had little interventions with me to get me together and shake it to get. Come on, tears, you're killing us. But you got to let me go. What you going to do? How you going to feel? I'm going to have to let you go, but I'm going to do like all the other companies do and give you a like a nice little pension or something to skate off with and start so you can start off again because oh that's real nigga shit because that's what they do with other companies anyway like if you notice that if you've seen it anytime we've seen like like a Harvey Weinstein situation or whatever well I can't say Harvey Weinstein because he owns the whole freaking company or whatever but like who I'm thinking about, like Bill O'Reilly or something like that. Like he he messed up to the point or whatever that he got to be, his show is gone. But I'm pretty sure they oh, gave him a nice... Harvey Weinstein. Hmm? 
<laughs> Don't ever put us in the same boat as Harvey Weinstein. Oh no, no, <laughs> never that, never that, never that. I was just trying to find like a, a a situation, and those are the like the you hear the name so much; those are the first things that pop up to your head. But I would say like it would. It would have to be one of those situations where we we um, we sweep it under the rug or whatever, and everybody know we've like separated or whatever. But we're I'm I'm a peacekeeper. That's just by nature. I feel like it shouldn't have to be in a situation where we can't negotiate and have a peaceful ends to a means. You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, uh, what was the example? I just lost the example I had other than dang. Yeah. Well, if you lost your example, I, I got another question here, and it stems from mm-hmm. the, the conversation we're having. Now, mm-hmm. do your workplace morals replace your personal morals when working with family and friends? No. Nah. Not for me. I can compartmentalize. Like, I feel like I can still have, I can have a heart within workplace rules to make sure that, like Pat said, like my family and friends land safely. But if it comes mm-hmm. to like, where like, I wouldn't say workplace because when it's a workplace, it's more family against the man. You know what I mean? But I'm more looking at like in business sense, like we doing business together or something. Like I'm looking at it like, at the end of the day, if we're doing business together and the business is the main objective and you're turning that up, then I got to find a safe way for you to land while still saving this business. So the business is going to have to, that business ethics would make more sense in that sense. Now, outside of that, like it wouldn't be none personal for me. It would literally be well, what's making the most business sense. But I think where the morals come in is where like Pat said, where you would be like, well, how can I make a severage package? So like, they still eat off of this, but yeah, they not directly influencing the business no more in a way that can be a detriment. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, oh man, I hate to. Um, Papa John, like how Papa John's is. He call the like people next. Huh? Call the people next. Yeah, not like him, but. <laughs> Your analogies have been off tonight, Pat. Because they're like the most they don't like the most known I could think of at the time or whatever. But first, just the guy first just, keto man, then nigga man. Just <laughs> forget it. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. So that makes room for my last question. Mm-hmm. And it still was around the amount of money the job was paying me. Now, would you would you be willing to leave a job that made you question your own personal morals in a in um in a job action if it was paying you more than it was expected for that said job? I.e., give an example. Say you say you work in some retail job and. And normally, you know, in normal circumstances, retail, certain for certain assistant management positions, you're making like 52 five. But say for this place, you know you're making out of your pay range and they're paying you 75000 Thumbs up, you got a terminated person that you know don't need to be terminated and shouldn't be terminated. But because of some loophole in a rule, they find a way to terminate them and they make it your job to terminate the person. Are you willing to leave your job because you're you're going against your own personal moral, or just go ahead and find a person and keep getting your money. I think, unfortunately, in most situations like that, people are not um, not at a position to leave a job if they're in that situation. Like I feel like that hap- that situation is happening all the time in America. Um, it's just that we're not often always thinking of a backup plan when we're having a job and the job is doing you good, pretty much. So, like, mm-hmm. even 
I would say, if anything, it would may it may be the beginning point of a long list of things that make you, after a while, leave that leave that job. But as far as like, if it's like the first occurrence or whatever, you're gonna you're gonna feel some type of way about it. But at the end of the day, you, you're looking at all right. If I leave this job right now, what am I gonna do to sustain myself until I find something better? Yeah. So that I, I I feel like that's the that's the one stipulation in that situation. Now, if you you just having a job, if you want one of them people, you're just working because you need to work, but you don't really have to work, and you retired or whatever, but and whatnot and you're at this point where you could leave a job if you feel like it then you're probably waiting at you're probably waiting for the point of saying hey you know what forget this i'm done i don't gotta do this (laughs) you know but i think that that situation is happening way more often and i think after a while it's more like um how many times i'm gonna have this situation where i feel uncomfortable then, then all right, I'm. It's time for me to go. Pretty much, mm-hmm. right? I think, um, yeah, I would leave. Um, so I had a job before I, the career I am in right now, that started asking me to do things that were unethical, by business practices, um, and just by what I felt personally comfortable with, and I left. I happened to. Ha- just get a job offer at my current career, like coincided, like it was literally like the day I came home and was telling, you know, my wife that, hey, I done left, I, I finally quit. The same day, I just happened to be getting a job offer, but I ain't have no parachute or nothing, but I, I really, I'm one of the people, I can't sit in discomfort morally knowing I'm doing something that I ain't supposed to be doing just to get a paycheck. Like, I feel like I'm going to get paid at some point. And for me, like, what might be chump change to somebody else might be exactly what I need to feel comfortable. Like, for me, as long as I can build up savings for my child and for my family, as long as I can pay my bills on time, as long as I can get the things that I want and the things that I need, I'm good. I don't really need like a super excess or nothing. I just need what I, you know, that we straight. And between me and my wife, we straight. So I, I, I ain't, I ain't that worried about it. Like I'll find a job. I'll go be a garbage man. Like I ain't tripping. <laughs> like. <laughs> I'll get a job because I, I ain't I ain't above doing nothing. Like I do pretty much anything. I was tired of shoveling shit all day. I don't think I could get to get with that. Just I couldn't do that. Get shoveling. Yeah, that just couldn't be my thing. But digging ditches or working in the sun or working with my hands, like I don't give a damn. Like I ain't I ain't above manual labor, I ain't above retail, I ain't above no type of job really. So Morally, I got to feel good about my spirit, man. Like, that shit be really bothering me. Like, I still got shit from my, especially now that I'm really heavy into my spirituality. Like, I feel like the older I've gotten, the wiser I've gotten, and the more spiritually awakened I've gotten, the more I really see, like, how the energies that you put out there really will come back to get you. And I ain't trying to be rich and be fucked up and be dying early and can't enjoy it or be miserable and then still got all this money like that. I want to be, if I do get money, I want it to be from morally good stuff so that way I can enjoy it and I can actually have fun with it and, you know, get, make make sure everybody with me, we, we, we acting a fool and having, like doing all the things that we grew up talking about doing, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want to get it and then got to feel bad about it or be looking over my shoulder because somebody going to get back at me because I, no, fuck all that. That's too mm-hmm. much stress. That's too much stress, but it, it ain't worth it. I, I think yeah. that, um, I think the people that get trapped in that situation is the people that like they end up having a comfortable lifestyle or whatever. 
And to maintain that lifestyle, they got to have that certain job. Now, mind you, they got like the resume to prove it. They could probably pick up another job anywhere if they do quit or whatever. But I think it's, I think a lot of um, situations like that, it's like they're so used in the lifestyle that they acquired from the job or whatever that that's where that moral um, questioning start kicking in and where hey are you gonna be are you gonna do this are you gonna leave because now mind you there's plenty of times where you have those horror stories where the guy um he got a great job he had a powerful position he's married got um with a with a trophy wife or whatever and then he decide he'd been talking to his wife about talking to, about leaving the job because it wasn't what um, it was making him doing something morally wrong and then or whatever after he quits the job his wife leaves him or some shit like that or whatever like like those are like real fears that some people have once they have it but at the same time it's like all right you the one that you knew she was like that you, you know like you knew that with this lifestyle, whatever you in getting that trophy wife or whatever, if you do something that is detrimental to that lifestyle, there she goes along with it. It's a package deal, pretty much. So, hey, what you gonna do, brother? Mm hmm. Yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah, that's that fuck shit. Indeed. Indeed. It's a bit of fuck shit. And like, speaking of fuck shit. Sometimes. Go ahead. Hour. I think it's time. You think it's time? Oh, I think it's time, bro. All right. Oh, shit, man. It's time for the good in the fuckery. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get it. Now, you know, the, the, the last, uh, the episode 30, we covered a whole lot of fuckery that, that first time because we, we, we were good out. Uh, out for a good minute or whatever yeah, so man. yeah man and, and but so much that happened but the things that has happened should be good for a good conversation here let's get it uh, first of all one of my favorite rappers uh may he rest in peace is about to get a star on the hollywood walk of fame uh let's give it up for a good good black excellence round of applause for nipsey hustle <laughs> nipsey hustle everybody Respect, yeah, respect. Was again passed away like two years ago, still, still um, achieving and accomplishing pretty much. But now, now, now that we got the goodness out the way, let's get right into the fuckery. Um, <laughs> let's do it. Aim, aim <laughs> let's so do much, it. but we're going to start. I, I would say there's three things, three fuck pieces of fuckery that let's has standed out. Shit. Since the last time we've we've uh banded together like Voltron. Um first, first um BET has been making their original movies lately or whatever. <laughs> so their <laughs> <laughs> so their fourth original movie that came out is called Karen. Karen. Like the like the white lady that called the cops on people. Yes, yes. <laughs> so is that a comedy? Nah, it's not. Is a it comedy. like a horror? Like what? What yeah. type of movie is this? This is shit. See, that's what that's like what social, like, uh, that's Peele. what social media and everybody been saying. Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bootleg Jordan <laughs> Peele. It's a bootleg Get Out. It's a bootleg. Uh, instead of instead of my, it's us. Karen. <laughs> yeah, it's Karen. That's the name of it. So, so I hit this trailer. I hit the trailer and everything, and I'm watching the trailer, <laughs> and this lady is just—it's <laughs> crazy, man. The way the lady was at lunch or something at brunch or whatever, and <laughs> and she's sitting down with this other white lady. So she was and the other white lady is like, "So, how's your new neighbors?" And Karen is like, well, they're black. And, it, and the thing, it was like, 
Man, y'all just gotta watch the trailer, man. It's just yeah, party, like, man. That's it. All right. <laughs> that's yeah. it. That's I was like, it. All right. Yeah. right. Okay. So they got this, they got this one scene in the trailer. Go where... see the trailer, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to put this up on the next live too, yo. We may go have to put this on the next live so y'all can see it. So so she comes on the trailer, the black lady, uh, the black lady, the neighbor or whatever. She's taking the trash Maybe. out or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I combined the two words together or whatever. So I'm about to say the blader, the blade, the like the neighbor, the slash black neighbor. <laughs> black neighbor. Oh man. But all right. The black <laughs> the black neighbor, that's a lady. <laughs> it comes out, take it out trash or whatever. And then this white girl pops up. And the when the white girl says, "Well, yeah, my mom she doesn't like black people," and she was like, and the and the lady, the black lady is like, "Well, I'm black," and then the and the little white girl is like, "Yeah, she don't like you either." <laughs> is this this well, gonna be the whole movie? <laughs> this BT this... coming to BT, y'all. <laughs> BT Originals. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, this is what they think black entertainment television should be. Oh my god, um, mm-hmm. and I'm hoping it's not hashtag Karen. I hope it's just Karen. I I just hope that was just oh, the hashtag. Oh, oh. I hope it uh, doesn't come out. I hope they stop that shit right at the at, at, <laughs> at the production line. <laughs> I hope jo- Jordan Peele that sues some or good something. And do some good and do the <laughs> ass cheeks. Oh Most man, garbage in the words of uh, Ike P. Well, well, time to stretch out for this next fuckery. Oh man, here we go. Oh, I know y'all don't like him. I know you don't want me to bring him up. And, and oh, no, Bow Wow! <laughs> don't worry, it's not Bow Wow this time. God I was about to say it. that. I was about to be like, don't you talk about Bow Wow no more. Fuck Bow Wow. No, no, no. Not Bow Wow. Not Bow Wow. I don't want to talk about him no more now. <laughs> Everybody's favorite new white boy, Logan Paul. Logan Paul think he can beat Mike Tyson. Because he's old. Because Mike Tyson is old. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, I want him to learn this lesson. I want him to learn this shit today. Uh, Mike, I'm please for take it. it. Mike, please take Mike, it. Mike, go for it, Mike. Mike, take go, the fight. Mike. Going on Trilla. I take don't fight, care where y'all put it at. Oh, y'all take the fight, Mike. Y'all can oh, fight. Oh, take the fight, Mike. Oh, my God. You can fight in a box. You can oh, fight with no socks. What is Mike, like 220 <laughs> now, 230? Do it. Do it, Mike. Do it for the culture. Oh, put them ham balls on him. Do it for the culture. I mean, put them liberated paws on him. I feel, I feel like God. Logan Paul he is can't like. Fight. Paul's. You ever seen? You ever seen a white person go through the hood to see if they can survive just for the thrill? Yeah. I feel like Logan Paul is going through the video game of black. Then black when them people. dudes get shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You keep your head in the tiger mouth if you want to. Eventually, that bitch gonna bite. The white people in the beginning of Snow on the Bluff. The white people in the beginning of Snow on the Bluff. That's what Logan Paul is. Follow your conscience. You don't take the beast, man. You leave the beast alone. I want to see it, though. I, we oh, all want to see it. For all that. Oh, we would, oh, we would have to we, uh, do a live we, stream of us watching it. Like We wouldn't we, be able to play it on nothing, but we could watch it together, I think. <clears throat> Maybe I can stream it over some, and then we can like record ourselves watching it. <laughs> live reaction. Yeah, like yeah, or like play it, or like react. We'll, oh, I don't know. Do we'll be in there. React to it with other people. But yeah, have us sound of like Snoop. <laughs> Having us <laughs> sound like Snoop in there. Snoopy doo, Snoop. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> comment there. <laughs> I give you what I show. Snoopy Nothing but the hits. Nothing but the hits. Snoopy. Um, 
Snoop Doggy Dog. Snoop Doggy Dog. Oh, what, what other fuckery we got here? <laughs> more, more fuckery. Um, let's more see. Fucker. Meg the Stallion goes off on the baby uh, because he did a collab with Tory Lanez. And her. now, what's that? Was it she, because they've done songs together before? I think so. I think they were going off or whatever. And then were they, they ever together? After... Hmm? Were they ever together? Uh, Tory Lanez and no, the baby and Meg. The, they made songs together, yes. But they were never like an item. Or They're never together. Were they best friends or anything? Like buddies? Did they hang uh, I mean, they were, they I mean, they were, I guess, you know, they were cool, you know, how, you know, when you're a fledgling ling rapper or whatever. So what's she mad about? So I don't know, brother. Oh, is, is, the song, is the song about her feet? No, no. So what's no. the problem? Oh no! I think she's trying to fifty cent the situation. She you think know, Tory like, ain't gonna make music with nobody no more ever. Oh. Until that nigga get convicted, you know he gonna make music. Tay K make music, and then nigga was on the run from the police. I know he's like Tory he, ain't on the run. They know exactly where he at, so he gonna keep on making music to this to this trial over. Once they convict yeah. him, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a real dry. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it was an open um, thing in the media to blackball him or whatever. And I feel like, yeah, if he did what he did, yeah, but uh, it's too much. It's too much. So, next fuckery. <laughs> next fuckery. Um, 6 9 is still trolling, and this time it's Gucci Mane and Pooh Shiesty. I, I, I want to box 6 9 Yeah, I think 6 9 is Doing the Logan Paul of rap, really. I think he's trying to go. I, through... I think we all do. One good drop kick in the face. No, just straight up hands. I want to do bare knuckle though. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not the only just, one. Just tape them up and let's just go. Let's I, I'm gloves. pretty sure you, you're just... definitely not the only one. And then I can grab better back. <clears throat> <clears throat> Smack him to the colors, cut off. Yeah. You think if you punch him, the like skittles will fly What's out? His name? Like, Danny, change Danny Garcia. Oh, like Danny Hernandez. Hernandez is. Oh no, I think it is Danny oh, Hernandez. Whatever well, is now, I smack him back to his regular. A lot of, her, a lot of reckless out Hernandez you out there. You and you are dirty. Nobody six and nine. I'm about to ask Siri, but I don't even care enough no more. Well, the, middle <clears> of, <throat> the middle of the mall watches. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's another piece of fuckery. Fuck her, they shine. You on mute. I just gonna tell you that. Okay, here we go. I'm at, no I'm unmuted now. No All right, remember eight mile. Eight Mile and uh, well, Eight Eminem? Mile, the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So you remember Lickety Split, the rapper that Eight Mile was like. I mean, not Eight Mile, but Eminem was battling in Eight Mile. It was like um, he was like the one of the like at the end. He was like one of the first rappers. The nigga in the room is a buff gym, um, Earth World Gym. Yeah, he got like a big, big lip looking dude or whatever. And then after him. After him, it was Lotto, and he did that line, Lotto, I don't fit you, or whatever. But it was the guy right before Lotto, pretty much. Did he have braids? Yeah, I believe so. But not, not he Lotto. He was real dark skin? No, Lincoln. I think you think of the Lotto. I think I think you're thinking of Lotto. He had the he had nothing but the um white uh the tank top on. I was about to say the beater. But anyway, he was uh well, anyway. <laughs> He's banned for having a business in Iowa. Yeah, okay, what so he this he running meth. Um, no, he's not running meth. He had <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, what was he doing? He had like some business where kids were going door to door selling stuff to people, whatever. But he was claiming it wasn't nothing like 
he was claiming it was for like a like a charity or something like that or whatever. But I guess the city of Iowa was like, no, not that's not Man, why legal. You got kids whatever. With that shit? Stop you know, getting kids he, and shit, y'all. Yeah, like it. It felt like a Umar situation when I was reading it. Like he was putting like some type of mentorship thing, and. It was really just him. It was really just kids selling stuff to people door to door or whatever. But uh, out the, the report I saw, it didn't really sh- tell me as much. And then he was. Where, um, hmm? Where is this guy? Uh, Lickety split. I think he actually now he I think he's actually living in Atlanta from the uh, report. But. He's not allowed to have a business in Iowa right now. I guess not. Yeah. How he got to Iowa. Uh, Leave and, kids alone. Like, if you do stuff that involves kids <clears throat> and wrong, you're going to fail every time. Yeah. 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 Speaking of leaving kids alone and uh, in, in general, here's the last thing. And I saw this. All right, well, so here in the 757, we got this radio station called 103 Jams, and sometimes they put up reports. Now, this report was, this was crazy. Because, yeah, leave kids alone. This was the um, the title of the report. Um, the dad is devastated that his son was his uncle. What? Yeah. Yeah, I had to get right into the article to the figure out what was going. The dad is devastated to find out his son is actually his uncle. Oh shit! Being that uh, him so, and so the girl he was from. with, yeah, the girl he was with, uh, I guess he had to stay at his uh, grandpa's house one night, and um, yeah. Grandpa was one of those grandpas that had the, as Faith said, had the pow pow gave her a pow pow. <laughs> had the family on the other side of town, pretty much. And Papa put that yeah. roller stone up in you. Yeah, instead of having a son, Grandpa was like, "Yep, beat you to it." You back there getting this geriatric geriatric grind on. Yep, yeah. man, and uh, just a little bit, girl. Let me just put the head in. <laughs> It's a little too much, man. <laughs> I saw this. I was like, oh man, what was this? Papa, what this remind me of? Is no. this is this movie? This That's is why movie the where they had this song. A nursing home S T D rates be so high. It's Papa diddling around. I did not know that. Oh yeah, they be passing it around, clap be going through there. Uh, I guess at some of them, rate, some they of don't them pills care. ain't for blood pressure or diabetes. Some of them pills is for gonorrhea and herpes. Dang, man. <laughs> they be, them old folk be, be fucking up a storm. Yeah. I guess they yeah. like, I don't even oh, care no more they because they I'm at my end anyway. So, be in them, uh, them residential facilities. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like them Golden Girls type, type jump offs mm-hmm. where everybody old. Mm-hmm. Oh, they be on them hover rounds getting around, getting it in, boy. Oh, I know what you're talking about because poor uh, they got one out here out Portsmouth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. They be in there. Paw Paw and Nana be. be in there. Uh, uh, that's terrible. That's mm. terrible. Yeah, more than just. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you said, what'd you say, Faith? Somebody, grandma, getting bent over tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we got him to clarify that. Oh, God. Oh, man. Nana. <laughs> Our wild oh. with your Nana. Doggy style on the hamper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And the illustrious words of Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron is <laughs> Cameron is one of the greatest. Oh man. And that um yeah, that, that, that last uh topic, that's the that put the fucking fuckery for this 
<laughs> this week. The Pretty fucker much. and fuckery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, um, so yeah, that, yeah. that ends the good and fuckery for this week, y'all. <laughs> You said with the song. We're gonna end it off with the fuckery shine. Oh, to a new topic for the next time. Well, all right. So back to you, Bob. I'm, I'm gonna be real. I had a hard time figure out what my topic was gonna be for this week. Kind of like didn't know what I, you wanted to talk about, huh? At all. Like uh had a not as hard as your week tis, but kind of had a little little week so most of my time i was thinking to myself this was supposed to be my vacation week as people didn't know whatever um and supposed to go out some you know go out of town or whatever it didn't go out the way i planned it to be or whatever so i'm at a crossroads where every capricorn think should i just go back into work or whatever, and just save this this vacation time, right? Or whatever. Absolutely, I asked. <clears throat> I asked that at the time. So I understand. Yeah, and or should I actually just have this week for myself? Because to tell you the truth, the way ever since I got in this job, it's been a constant routine over and over and over and over and over again. I haven't really had time to like really like okay. I want to think on what I want to take my comic book business. What's my next step? All right. I have my trademark for the emblem and everything. Um, we got the colorist going. Should I take out a business loan? Should I do this? The, you know, like my next steps or whatever. Like, so I decided in an uncapricorn way that, yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and take this vacation week. Yeah. I think so. <clears throat> looking at your um looking at sometimes your you just gotta say the hell with it, man. Like I just need a break from what I'm doing. Like, damn, if I'm going the way I thought I was going, I need to stop doing this shit every day. Give me a let me do something different tomorrow. Yeah, that's that's the you and you took the reset. thoughts right out of my head, yo. Mm -hmm. Like brain reset or whatever. So uh, I say, you know what? I just you know have this open conversation about how you do need that break from that routine because you know as like with us being Capricorns routines are great for us all right I already yes. know what I need to set I yes. just know what to do let me get out the wild but like at the wild it's kind of like it feels like that routine overheats like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like it <clears throat> like you do need to reset something like sometimes you you end up just throwing something in the routine out the way just so you can oh uh, like even i have a moment you know to decompress after work or whatever you know and like even with that that's supposed to be my moment where i just do something random or whatever and just to get my mind off things but even in that just because i got a set time and space for that that's part of the routine also Mm -hmm. So it almost feels like I'm not really resetting. It's more like, like it's just a necessary part of my schedule. Yeah, yeah. They just all right. Let me just get this spirit going, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like people will tell me all the time, it's like, no, you got to have vacation. You got to have vacation. I'm like, like, yeah, but I have this and this and then this and this and then this and this, but Bruh, now you know how that hard it was to not do work <clears throat> over my vacation. Do you know oh how you know how you know I had to literally <clears throat> like you know how you can delete your apps but still keep the data? I had to delete mm -hmm. third, I had to delete my email apps. Cause I know if I had a saw one notification, I was gonna open it and I was gonna read it and then I was gonna mm -hmm. go down a rabbit hole and be all yeah. right, well, let me call them. Well, let me go ahead and get on this website and do this. Well, let me find this vendor. Well, let me make sure I... Like, I knew I was going to jump into So I was like, you have to be... You have to use your Capricorn skills to plan against... To plan yes, chaos. So. <laughs> you got to plan against your planning. Like, okay, I know I'm going to do this. So knowing that, what do I need to do to make sure I can't do that? 
let me do you know what i'm saying like it, it's sad but i definitely feel you because like and you know like i'm not like a super organized person or anything like that but as far as like routine and like even in my chaos it's a method to it like if i was yeah. to go if i was to go into the messiest drawer in my house i can tell you exactly what's in that drawer and if something's missing i can tell you if that makes sense so like, no, no, it makes sense. I, I still makes got sense. a system to it because I know what's in which drawer. You know what I mean? So it's like, I definitely feel you on that. Yeah, but just just plan against it. Use your Capricorn powers for good and plan against yourself. It 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 sure, it, it sounds weird, but it works. Once again, I'm my own worst enemy. Because you you like you you well, always feel like you got to do something. Yep. Like even and if technically, you don't... there's always something to do. So you're do. like. I stop myself from doing this like yeah and it, it, like oh no like how do you get like and I don't know it builds up like an anxiety like like even if you don't have really don't have nothing to do like you really can spend a whole day just by like to yourself like just sleeping all day or whatever you still have that moment during the day like I no nah, I gotta do something you know, I plan so, out my, my days when I'm doing nothing. Like, so uh, we got uh, my son in camp right now, right? Mm-hmm. So because of that, you know, like during the daytime, once my main job work is done, I'm really just thinking of ideas for the podcast or thinking of videos that could be made. So I'm just really like kind of watching videos on YouTube, watching <clears throat> videos on the internet, like looking for ideas, like doing that type of thing. Almost like a, a stand-up comedian would do doing it, day, like reading the news, looking at shit, like just consuming shit, trying to catch an inspiration. I have to plan out doing nothing during that time though. Like I have to literally say, okay, during this time, I'm gonna take a nap. Okay, during this time, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna play a video game. Okay, during this time, I'm going to just eat a snack and stare off into the sunset. Okay, and this time I'm going to act like, because if not, I will fill that shit up with work some kind of way. I will find some shit. Oh, well, I need to edit these three things and I need to cut this and I definitely want to record this, 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 and this. And then I got to watch this because this is going to come in on Saturday night. And then I got to do this, 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 and this for my job. And then I can also do this. Oh, and what about that? I can get up on that for next semester. Oh, I can get up on that for next year. Oh, I can do this for next sem- Yeah. Oh, oh, my son need this for next month. Let me go ahead and look this up. So I know he gonna need this when he turns seven. He only six now, but I know he gonna need it when he took, like I, my brain will go right into work mode. You right. Oh. And don't need to be doing none of it. It's just stuff that can be done. So I'll do it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was just, I just thought of myself, hey, what can I do to just keep myself from overheating this week or whatever? Like, just like restart myself, refresh myself or whatever. I was going to ask, uh, as far as like, like face or whatever, like, do you go through the same thing yourself? Like as far as decompressing and like, like the whole routine thing or whatever, or. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I have a struggle to not go to work or not do work even when I'm sick. So say I have to call out. I'll debate Mm -hmm. for an hour before I call out if I'm going to call out because once I call out, I know, damn, now I have the entire day what I'm going to do. I I can't just lay around and be sick. I got to do something. I don't care about being like something to be done. So the whole time I'm, I'm not at work, I'm thinking about being at work. So I might as well go to work. Then when I go to work, I'm like, damn, I don't feel good, but I'm at work. But it's like, it's, 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 it's not exactly. a crazy you look day. up at the end of the year, you realize you ain't took no days off, and you'd have just sit there and it's work, a, and work days, through a whole bunch things. of bullshit that you shouldn't have. Right. Mm-hmm. I take days off. The days I take off because I got to do something for family or somebody's sick, I got to take to the doctor. Like, I truly don't take days off that for myself for real you know what I'm like so when I do need to take a day off for myself I'm like well fuck it I can't take a day off so any yeah. other days I'm gonna go to work anyway so I mean when yeah. I do take vacation it's a, it's a forced vacation because my wife makes me take vacations so ah, shit good wife I gotta go but, but when I'm on vacation 
like as far as that work shit, I, I turn everything off. Like so, phone goes silent. Like I, I I don't communicate with the world. If you're not there on the vacation with me, I, I don't I don't know what's going on. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I gotta go through that. Like it's it's always a bad time to yourself and just time to unwind. Um, I I had a job in the past where I was dedicated to nothing but that job for years. And I missed several holidays, birthdays, everything. I was just consumed with the job because I was like, I, I got to be at work, got to be at work. I ain't got no time for nothing. But after I left that job, I looked back on everything I missed and all the time I didn't have for myself and stuff like that. Times uh, my body was so broke down because I didn't take the time off. So, I mean, it's always important to have yeah. that time for yourself because at the end of the day, you are also what job you have. If anything happens, you, you gotta realize they just gonna hire somebody else when you're gone. So I mean, like, yeah, it, it, it's a sad thing, thing to say. It's a real sad thing to say. But if you're really looking for a job, you don't look in the 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 one that ad. You look at the obituary. Because everybody that died, that's a job that opened up. Mm. Yeah, because otherwise people just <clears throat> be moving around in them positions, but they gonna still have them. I mean, hey. It's also fucked up the same thing to say, but if you're looking for a house, the uh, another good place to look is also the obituary because everybody died. Mm. They live some, they live somewhere. That's crazy. <clears throat> That's real. Face always hit you with that random knowledge, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, damn the real estate ads. Wisdom. Go look at their obituaries. Get you a nice crib. <clears throat> damn work, man. Oh. I'm telling you, man. You'd be surprised of my field of work. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised what you find out of my field of work. My nine to five opens up to a lot of different shit. It's some. I deal with some real sad shit sometimes. Like people call me and tell me some sad shit that I can't. I can't do nothing about. But just listen to you, and I be like, that's why I bring up some of the questions, like the moral moral shit. Like people tell me, like I ain't had a job in this long. I, I can't. I can't do this, and I be like, well, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you oh well. <laughs> you, you you still have a responsibility to do this. So, I mean, like, I understand all that, but do you understand this? <clears throat> mm-hmm. <laughs> you gotta be human, but there's just things. There's just I don't know, man. <laughs> it's funny, man. Realism. It's just like, <clears throat> have y'all ever mm-hmm. like? Oh, I take when we were um, before the pandemic and people were still going to buildings for their job and everything or whatever. Have y'all ever had to? Won't feel it. How I say? You will wake up. You do the normal routine. You driving to work or whatever. You drive all the way to work. The closer you get to work, you feel like worse and worse like your normal routine to get you psyched up for the day ain't really working or whatever and you drive all the way to work just to call out not so much um I tell you, like, usually however i wake up it's pretty much how i feel like if i wake up and i feel that bad where i need to take off whether that be like that mentally fucked up where i need to take off or that physically fucked up then i just go ahead and take off but I wake up feeling like that. I know as soon as I get up, like, okay, I'm going to be able to push through this. Oh, no, this is going to get worse. So I just know, and I just go ahead and with it. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think Face was about to speak to it. Mm-hmm. I feel what you're saying, Pat. I've driven all the way to my job before I got there, and then it was like, fuck this in the parking lot. I called out and turned around and went home. And I was like, no, nah, I, I ain't getting out the car and doing this shit today. <laughs> I ain't got it, you know. Fuck this and the whole shit, time I'm trying to convince myself, the whole time I'm on the way to work, I, I'm trying to convince myself, yeah, you got it. I mean, for mm-hmm. the past, let's see, for the past 10 years, regardless of where I've lived, I've lived an hour away from work, regardless of what I've done for a living. You feel me? Like, I've lived an hour away from it. So, mm-hmm. that hour, I'm either spending getting myself prepared for work or getting myself psyched up to go to work or trying to convince myself yeah, let's go to work. It's a rare occasion when I got to convince myself, yeah, let's go to work. But on those few times when I was at, at that former job, 
Well, I got to the I got to the building, got in the parking lot, parked in my parking space, looked at the building, was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and call out. I, I just I just can't yeah. do it. I know I just went through my gas and I'm about to drive all the way home. <laughs> I just mentally I can't do it today because I'm gonna go crazy to deal with what you get to deal with sometimes. So I do I do understand we can prepare, but like that's just the internal struggle I feel we all face at one point or another when we at, at a point of just being too tired of what we're doing in life. So we yeah. just gotta at that point look to mm-hmm. I gotta find a new because if it's bringing that much anxiety and that much internal struggle, it, you gotta change that common denominator that's bringing all that. You feel because it ain't you bringing it on yourself. You won't like that at home. You won't let it in the car. But when you, the, the closer you get to the source of your anxiety, you feel me? like you got to try to mm. change up that source so it won't be yeah. that anxiety from it. I mean, I mean it, it took me a long time to figure that out in my own personal circumstance. And now that I look back, I'm like, yeah, a lot of stress I had, a lot of body mm. pains I had, a lot of just personal stuff I was going through just internally, personally, and just with family and friends I don't have to go through no more. I feel like, at that former job, I was a person. I, I was I was in a position where I had to fire people all the time. I mean, sometimes I didn't care. I was shit. I was. I, I've been the person with the box of tissue at the desk. Oh, honey, you need a tissue. Somebody crying because you're crying. Oh, you you need tissue. Here you go. Yeah. But I've also been that person. I was to say with the person I had to fire because I knew they were getting fired for something wrong. You feel me? And at that point in time, that was like yeah. right, that's when the switch hit. Like, man, I really don't want to be here no more. Mm-hmm. It was like, it just like I I know like when you got to cross that line personally, like and, uh, I don't it ain't this ain't right. Yeah, I didn't do this with this other person, but y'all doing this with this person. Nah, you know. So I I get I totally get the anxiety part. I totally get. That. Mm. I feel. Yep. It's like it's like when you're um. When you're playing a video game and you get to that one part of the video game, like you enjoy playing the video game, but you get to that one part of the video game where it's taking you forever to actually beat it. And and then you to a point where you're at the like, end. Oh, and you here lose. we go with this again. <clears throat> and you constantly just mm-hmm. trying to beat it over and over and over and over again. It's like right. that's how it is when you drive to that job and then you start the buildings start looking like Cooper's Castle. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Same monotony over and over. This is monotonous bullshit. Over and over. Same <laughs> thing. <laughs> pretty much. But, mm-hmm. yeah, man. That that was pretty much my topic, man. I, I just needed a therapy session with the bros right quick. Hey man, much. Ain't no, ain't no so yeah, man. Um, that was a great last topic there. I think that's a good point to you know kind of end the show there, fellas. Um, I don't have a black business for this week. Um, uh, people out there in YouTube land and Apple land, Spotify land, wherever you're listening or watching this at, you have black businesses that you want to promote. Um just send us the information. We'll look them up. And if they're reputable, we will definitely support and promote them for free. We just want to make sure that we are able to continue to put money back into our community. Um, speaking of money, it's the part of the show that I don't like, but it is definitely vital as we grow um, and try to improve content for you guys. Um, if you want to support financially, you can go to Dollar Sign Partner Tears 1 on your cash app. Um, or you can also go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. Um, you can donate as for as little as a dollar. You can also sign up for $5 memberships. We'll give you exclusive behind the scene content, unedited episodes every week. Um, you also get members only events and activities and videos. And you um, get moderator access for all of our live chats. And um, you also, you know, get special promo codes from Face whenever he does new merch drops. You get the discounts while everybody else has to pay full price. So, a um, good way to get your discounts on your merch as well. Um, you can also get the same membership access if you don't want to go to buymeacoffee.com. You can also sign up for a membership for as low as $5 on Patreon. And you get all of those same perks. Plus, each tier on Patreon, you get a free piece of merch. Um, 
at some point after a certain amount of time that you've been a member. So no matter whether you're paying five, 10 or above that, you would definitely still be able to get that. Um, so that's the financial shit. Um, Pat, if they want to holler at us on the social media tip or they want to holler at us off of one of the podcasts or YouTube sites, they can do that. How they can do that? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's at T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. And that is the Twitter. That's the Instagram. That's the TikTok. And you can put in that in the search and Facebook and you'll find Tiz Face Pat are the partners. And there we are. And you can Hey, if you have any ideas, um, you can comment there, DM us. Uh, if you got any um, videos you want us to react to for our live show, you didn't ask us, but you can send it there. And, uh, yep, we definitely respond. Indeed, 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 indeed. And if you want to get the merch, the apparel, if you want to get your hoodies, your phone cases, your mugs, what have you, how can they get all of the gear and apparel and merchandise? Brother Faith. Well, if they're interested, they can visit us at teespring.com backslash store backslash partner dash closet dash the number one. Once again, that's teespring.com backslash store backslash partner P-O-D-N-A-S dash closet. Not going to spell it for you. Dash the number one. Also, if you're interested in any apparel inspired by the mind of Face himself, visit me at Face and Company, which you can find at teespring.com backslash stores backslash face, spelled P H A C E dash co dash the number two. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And if you forget all of that and you still want to get in touch with us in any way for anything, whatever you may want to find the partners for, find us at thepartners.com. Exclusive access to all of our live streams, all of our videos. You can find all of our websites that we're on, no matter what platform you're trying to find us on. You can find us there. You can email us. You can pretty much, it's a one-stop shop. So you can also get uh, exclusive access to both stores from there. So partners.com. Go there, use it. It's easy to remember. T H E P O D N A S dot com. Um, but yeah, man, that's our show for this week. Um, episode 32 in the books. Um, I would say, Patreon, you're going to have some funny shit, but unfortunately, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, uh, Patreon, if we ever get any members. Ask us what happened to some of these episodes and what, what, yeah, it's a lot to be going on that y'all be missing, boy. I tell you. One day we're going to get to the point we're going to be recording these live in front of our people that's members and y'all going to see all of the <laughs> the struggle that go into producing this podcast every week. So we love y'all. Thank you for continuing to believe in us. Um, we appreciate you. Love yourselves. Um, as always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your boy Tiz, along with the other third of the partners, the Padawan here. I'm looking for his bong, along with you know, it's facing a place. And right now, I think I'm leading the race. Y'all have a good night, man. Indeed. Peace.